Angeles Heard Valley Community Church. All right, y'all come in and sit down. We're ready to start. Ralph. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Heard Valley Community Church. We're glad you're here and glad that you were watching out there. We're just going to glorify God. Amen? Yeah. Everybody's having a good time socializing this morning. <laughs> so uh, okay. we're going to open with the word of prayer. Father, again, we just love you so much. We thank you for your faithfulness. We just thank you for keeping your eyes upon us. We thank you for what you're going to do for us. Yes. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stand with me if you would. And we're going to sing, Therefore the Redeemed of the Lord. Anybody redeemed out there? Yeah. Yeah.
Amen. Well, how many of you can do this? Oh, amen. How many of you can do it together? <laughs> yeah. I'm 33. All right, let's go down to the river.
Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. We have a lot of announcements we want to make to you this morning. And so, uh, first of all, if you'd like to keep supporting us here at Lucerne Valley, I keep forgetting to do this one, so being chastised. <laughs> I'm sorry, board, but I'll do it. I promised them I'd do it this morning. All right. P.O. Box 788, Lucerne Valley, California, 92356. Amen? Amen. Send your big checks and all that good stuff. <laughs> and for those of you that are in town and like to have part of this, uh, we have started a recycling uh, thing to raise money. And so bring your cans and bottles to the church, and we're recycling them for money because we can use some money. How many know that you need money nowadays? Yes. Yeah, we need money. Okay. So, and we're going to do prayer too. Now we had some serious prayer requests. Okay. We got Brother Don Jeffries is still in the hospital and he's had his leg amputated. Now he's in rehab. And so if you knew Don, you know he's a real sweetheart. He was the head of our board here for years. The last several years he's been having to take care of his wife. And so we want to remember him. Cal is still in intensive care in St. Mary's Hospital, we we'll remember him in prayer, and uh, he can use all the prayer we can give him. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have an extended family member ourselves, Charlene Williams, who has just discovered yesterday that she has brain cancer. Aww. And so we want to remember that young lady in prayer also. A lot of medical issues and things going on, a lot of people sick, and so we need to pray. We're going to talk about prayer. And uh, part of the announcements for Wednesday night would be that Sunday or Wednesday, we're going to talk about prayer and talk about prayer in the spirit, even. And we're going to hint on that a little bit in today's sermon, but we're going to take it apart a little bit further on uh, Wednesday night. So we encourage you to come. How many believe you ought to pray? Amen. How many of you even know what praying in the spirit is? Yes. Amen. Amen. How many of you don't want to know? You're scared to know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, uh, is it, oh, brother, would you're going to get crazy? No, I'm going to get biblical. Yep. Amen. Amen. So um, we invite you to come. I think we need to learn how to pray and pray more earnestly and more sincerely and more to the will of God, not assume that God's going to do whatever you open your mouth to. Amen. Amen. Ooh. Right. How many of you know you make a lot of assumptions when you pray? Right. Uh, hey. Oh, we're going to get into it. It's easy to look because you know how some of your eyes are going, what are you going to do, Pastor? What? So, we'll take a look on Wednesday night. So we invite you to come. Ralph has a few words of wisdom now for us. Oh, no. <laughs> Talking about prayer. Yeah. Make sure the button's up. Oh. Side button. Side button. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, okay. Sorry. Can you hear me now? <laughs> you got that phone? <laughs> okay. You know, you, you know the whole thing talking about prayer. Uh, you know, my uh, my 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 shower was stopped up, and I couldn't take a shower this morning. And I really felt, you know, I said, Lord, now that, that, that my water is stopped up, I just fixed it two months ago. I'm talking to God, but that's the way I talk to Him. He, He's, he's my friend. He's everything to me. So I tell him, I said, why, Lord? I need my shower to go to church to go praise you. <laughs> and, and, and it's stopped up. You're in control of everything. You know, and I, I was just going on and on. I said, forgive me, Lord. And then I thought about other people like in the crane where they're, they're killing their families and they have no water. They have no food. I said, what are you complaining about, Ralph? And I, I ask God to forgive me for acting like that. But I keep doing it over and over. Every time something comes up, I blame God. You're in control, Lord. You know what you're doing. <laughs> but God is good. So let me say what I got to say here. The Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength the second is this you shall love your neighbor you gotta love your neighbor as yourself 
We got to suck that in our brain. There is no other commandments greater than these. And then Jesus says, you too be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. One day Jesus is going to come for us. And I want Jesus to catch me right here, right now. I don't want to catch me complaining to him. So I want to, so I got to watch. You know, one thing about me, I know God sees me all the time. He's with me all the time. And I know he sees everything I do. And I'm by myself. All the time I'm, I'm by myself. I go eat by myself. I do everything by myself. But I know I'm not by myself. And God is my strength in my life. Man. And everything I do is with God. I know he's seen me doing it. And I watch what I do. So when God comes, he's going to say, you know, Ralph, you screwed up a few times. But you're a good man. Come on in. Amen. Because he made me that way. Not because I wanted to be that way. God is good. And we got to keep his commandments and do the right thing. Amen. That's all of us. Do the right thing. Okay? Okay. Now let's say a prayer. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you're there with me all the time, Lord. Because when my wife died, I used to read that, that sign you had there. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Yes. And that is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And I know it's true, Lord, because you got me through all the hard times that I had to go through. And if you got me through those, you can get anybody through them, Lord. And just help us all to open up that Bible and read your word to understand with our hearts open what you really trying to tell us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Ralph. All right. Yeah. Amen. All right. All right. Now, he gets to take the offering. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Michael Paul's got a special announcement he wants to make. On uh, the 5th, it's harvest. So we're going to be leaving here. I'm not sure what time yet, but we'll show up here on the 5th. I'll figure out uh, more details on transportations and whatnot. But the 5th of what? The 5th of November. And uh, we'll be taking the church van. We'll cram as many people as we can in there. And what is the Harvest? The Harvest Crusade down in Anaheim. It's Greg Laurie. He does this whole thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, he does Man. his preaching, but then they also have a lot of music going on. It's a flyer in the back with everybody that's playing. They do it on Saturday and Sunday, uh, the 5th and 6th this year, but we're going down on the 5th. So then we can tell you guys about it on the 6th, whoever does it go. So hopefully yeah. all of you can go. All right. Very good. Awesome. Thank you, Michael Polk. All right. Team doing a good job this morning. Give a big hand. All right, children, you may escape this morning. That's a kind way of saying God. <laughs> All right, good to see that big bunch of kids. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Pray for the teachers. <laughs> All right. All right. I want to talk to you about shoes this morning. The interesting thing that Ralph mentioned, uh, the verse where Jesus said, you do not know the time or hour. Be ready. Yeah, but he did give us, and we don't know the time or the hour, but he did give us signs to tell us the season. Uh, how many of you have been at the gas pump lately? <laughs> do you think anything happening with our fuel or with oh. the energy? Anything going on with our energy? Yeah. Yeah. 
Kind of crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the Bible tells you all about it and told you something. This is one of the signs. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 7, <coughs> he says, Watch your oil and the wine. Be careful with the oil and the wine. Having trouble buying your food lately? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What about the food prices? How about the people going hungry all over the world? And yet we're the richest we've ever been and we're the sickest we've ever been. That's right. We're the more educated we've ever been and we're stupider than we've ever been. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Jesus tells you in Revelation chapter 6, he says, watch the oil and the wine. Now that's right in your face. Mm -hmm. Every time you go to the pump, you got to say, you know, the Bible tells me about this. Besides all the other prophecies that have already been fulfilled, amazing prophecies, the alignment of the nations around Israel would, before it came a nation again, you would have thought it to be impossible. But all these things have happened. And every day when you read your newspaper, you see it on the news. If you even bother to watch the news anymore, you're seeing prophecy fulfilled. And Jesus said, when you see these things come to pass, look up for you know your redemption draweth nigh. And it's a time for us that are claimed to be Christians to really get serious about winning our loved ones to the Lord and getting busy. Place shouldn't be half full, it ought to be 100% full. Yeah. Amen. Now, sometimes that's not your fault. Sometimes people just say no. But then that's on them. But that don't give you. That doesn't give you the right to stop praying for them or dealing with them. That's right. Right. Amen. All right. Anyway, I want something to do. How many of you like good shoes? Amen. You like good shoes? How many of you like shoes that are too tight? No. How many of you like shoes that are too big? No. Chris does. He likes big shoes. Okay. That's because he's got big feet. All right. But it's nothing more comfortable, especially if you've had a bad pair of shoes, to have a good pair of shoes. Now, most women probably deal with shoes more than men do. Men usually have three or four pairs of shoes, and that's about it. Women may have pairs of shoes. Yeah. How, how many would you guess her to have, Tommy? One. I'm saying about... Uh, 19. 19, is that all? That's it. <laughs> Stephanie got 25. 25. 53. Oh. Uh, well, he's got how many? He's got like 50. I, brought, I took 53 pairs of Crocs to Don. 53. <laughs> I'm counting I'm count over 100. 53 pairs. In my house. <laughs> Shoes. Shoes are important to us for a lot of reasons, and we have shoes for different things. I wear my dress shoes or my boots to church, okay? But that's the only time I wear them, generally speaking. I wear tennis shoes to work because I got a casual job, so I can wear tennis shoes and they're comfortable. When I go to the gym, I take special shoes that have never seen the pavement <laughs> because they're court shoes. They're just for the hardwood court. That's good. See? Ah. So you got shoes that are made for everything. But God's made you, each and every believer, a special pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. Special shoes. Custom made. Just for you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And we're going to talk. And Red has been teaching on the armor of God the last couple of weeks. We've been teaching on the armor of God. And I'm not going to necessarily do that this morning, but I'm going to take one article of that clothing, the third one mentioned in the scripture, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 15, so you can turn there, 14 and 15. And then we're going to jump all the way down to the 18th verse, and I'm going to try to put those together. God's made you custom shoes just for you because you are special. How many of you know every one of you is different? Amen. Some of you are really different. <laughs> Some are more different than others. Okay? Different from what? Compared to what? Huh? Okay. But God has things just made just for you because he loves you and he wants you to be as effective as possible for his glory. So he's equipped you. And we've gone through the whole thing about the armor of God with, with all the other things. But we're going to talk primarily today about the shoes. God made shoes just for you. Made to protect your feet, 
from the enemy. They were soft leather shoes, and basically this was formed from off the Roman soldier back in those days. And they were studded for non-slip flooring. <laughs> they were studded so they wanted to have a fir firm, stable grip. How many of you think you ought to have a firm, stable grip? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many when you're walking don't want to slip? Yeah. Well, if you're in combat, you really don't want to slip. But those shoes were custom made, and they're actually, we didn't study that part of it, but the shoes are actually in two parts. The one was the shoe that went on the foot itself, the other was extended to it. We would call them chin guards that went up and they were made of brass or hard, or hard leather to protect their legs because what effective, how effective can a soldier be if his foot are wounded? He's pretty much stuck and becomes very vulnerable, doesn't he? So God's equipped you with everything you need and these shoes were custom. They're studded, they were durable, and they not only had a firm grip, but they were also made for speed. How many of you have ever seen a track shoe? Yeah. What's different about a track shoe from a normal shoe? Lighter. It's very light, but it's also something else about it. It's got traction on the bottom. It has cleats on it. It's got little needles on it. But if you ever got hit by one, you would remember it. <laughs> I had that privilege one time in a race where a fellow misjudged his stride and he caught me in the back of my leg and ripped my calf open with his track shoes. They were like little needles on the bottom of the shoes. What's that for? It's to grip the surface so he can get further faster. And so the soldier of the cross was equipped for Christ not only to hold your ground firmly and be able to take the onslaught of the enemy, but they were also designed so that he could move out quicker than his adversary, be more agile on his feet, or more sure-footed on his feet than his enemy. And usually the Roman soldier was victorious because of his equipment. And God's given you that equipment, but it's just not to hold ground. We sometimes look at the armor of God and we've preached and it's always about defense, 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 holding the ground, holding the ground, holding the ground. And I want to show you this morning that it's not just about defense. What's the best defense? Offense. A good offense. All right. Last night, USC got beat. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're six and one. Yeah, they got beat by Utah. What beat them? A better offense. Yeah. Neither team had a defense. It was forty-one to forty-two. But Utah was behind forty to forty-one, and the Utah coach decided they made a touchdown instead of going for one for a tie. He went for a two. Parts. two now he's ahead, 42 to 41, and they held off USC in the last minute of the game and won the game by what? One, one. Offense. Offense. Defense important? Absolutely. But offense is also important because with offense is when you gain the ground. That's where you gain the victory is with the offense. Okay. So every Christian, God has got a special pair of shoes just for you, and he knows your size. Amen. All you got to do is put them on and go to work. <laughs> Ephesians 6.14, stand therefore having girded your loins, your waist, with fruit, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now that's prior to, and we're not going to redo all of that that we did last week where we dressed the soldier and all of that. That spirit of truth that where you dress your loins, of course, everything is built and attached from that because the spirit of truth is God's word. Amen? Amen. And having your feet shod. Now that sounds like you're dealing with horses almost, doesn't it? But shod means fitted. Some translations say prepared. Fitted, okay? Fitted with the preparation of peace. Your feet prepared to move to win peace. Mm -hmm. Fitted with what? The Amplified Version puts it this way. And having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with firm footing stability. 
the promptness and readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. That's right. You to move on to do what? To spread the good news, the gospel of peace. Not just stand and defend, but once you have beat off the enemy off the defense, don't stand around waiting for him to attack you again. Go kick his backside. Take the ground. Take the offense. Wow. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Preparation, promptness, and readiness. The gospel of peace. The gospel is the good news because it establishes peace between God and man. Mm -hmm. It is our job to go out and tell the world Jesus saves. So we start with prayer for all the saints. I want to say this again. Gospel, the gospel is the good news because it establishes peace between God and man. What is good news? It is the gospel. The good news is the gospel. And the gospel establishes peace between God and man. How many of you think the world needs some peace today? Amen. How many people do you know that needs peace in the midst of all this chaos? Amen. Take it to them. Take it to them. Tell them where to find it. Illustrate the peace. Too often the church is just sit in a defensive pose and remain there. You need to become offensive. Not just defense, but offense also. You have the good news. You have the key that establishes peace between man and God. How important is that? How much does the world need that? Desperately. How much do your neighbors need that? How much do your children need that? Your grandchildren need that? You possess the peace. And you as a soldier of the cross also have a responsibility. Because God has given you peace. Amen? Amen. Yeah, you're at peace because you've been justified by the Lord. So therefore, according to Romans 5.1, you are justified by peace. Therefore, you're justified by from your sins, therefore you have peace and you have the peace of God and you're to share it with others. Mm -hmm. ah. Now I want to jump. So he's given you the shoes and he's given you all the rest of the armor. Now in verse 18 it says this, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. You're to pray for the saints, other saints. Everybody say, I am. I am to pray to pray for all, for all the other, the other, other saints. saints. Not pick them apart. Amen. I just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> it's not your job to pick them apart. It's your job to pray for them. Amen. Amen. Good place for an amen. Yes, amen. Too much time in church sometimes everybody's uh, picking everybody apart instead of praying for one another. Yeah. Whoa. You know, you had a music professor once that said it didn't take a genius to hear a bad note. Huh. And he was looking right at me when he said that. <laughs> there were some of us freshmen that got honored to be in what they call the number of classmen's choir. And we were singing, and some of the guys just couldn't get the notes, and we were kind of having a little fun at their expense. And Professor Beiser looked right up at the bass section, and I swear he was looking right at me, and he said, any idiot can hear a bad note. <laughs> <laughs> but it takes hard work to create harmony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how important is it for an army to be in harmony and in unity with itself? It's an interesting phrase. Praying always with all prayer. All prayer. Okay. And supplication. Humility. In the spirit. What's that mean? Directed by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
prompted by the Holy Spirit? Illustrated by the Holy Spirit? Romans 8. I'm going to read a crazy verse to you. And we're going to talk about it more on Wednesday night. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should even pray for, as we ought. But the Spirit himself. Who's the Spirit himself? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. How does he make intercession for us? By the blood. What's it say there? With groanings, that cannot... With groanings and moanings which cannot be uttered. Yeah. Now how many have prayed for dinner? Now I'll lay me down to sleep. Bless this Lord before I eat. <laughs> <laughs> we pray at one level we tend to pray at a human intelligent level intellectual level what he is suggesting here is that we pray in a spiritual level pray in the spirit how many of you have been so prostrate before God so earnest before God so needed needy before God that you actually prayed with other dreams that could not be even understood. Whoa. Brother, well, there you go getting Pentecostal. No, there I go getting biblical. Amen. There you go. Amen. Amen. You need to learn how to pray. Really pray. Pray where your prayer is directed by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you don't even know what you're praying for, but the Holy Spirit is praying through you with moanings and groanings that you don't understand. But he knows. Look at the next verse. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the what? Will of God. Sometimes we pray or we make certain assumptions that we were going to command God to do thus and so. And the Holy Spirit said, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't I have something to say about that? What's God's will? How many of you Christians know that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Oh, some of you are looking at me with strange eyes now wondering where I'm going. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. So the Holy Spirit abides within you, right? He knows, how many of you think he knows your desires? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's the Holy Spirit, which also makes him part of the what? Trinity. The Trinity. Okay. So you, how many of you think he knows the will of the Father? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So he can take your will and the will of the Father and match it where you can't. Get over yourself. Get over your own assumptions. Learn how to pray. And pray with such fervency. Such earnestness that you even learn to pray in the Spirit. Oh, I'm going to challenge you to learn how to pray. I'm challenging myself to pray more fervently, yes. earnestly. And pray for who? What's it say? <coughs> pray for who? The text, what's the text tell you? Pray for who? All the saints. Why? Why are you praying for all the saints? Because they're going to war. Right. They are in war. How many of you know you're not going to war? We keep talking. But most of you are in a defensive mode right now because you're in a war. That's yeah. right. You're in a, how many of you in a battle of one type or another? Oh, wow. Amen. Probably everybody here. Because mm -hmm. the devil's not prejudiced. He attacks everybody in some way, shape, or form. That's right. Right? Oh, yeah. So we stand to be so... so so, sometimes we're so busy just on the defense, we never think about the offense. We don't call a play for the offense. We don't have a strategy for the offense. We're too busy with our shield of faith dodging all the, fiery the arrows darts. and the fiery darts of doubt <clears throat> and fear, mm -hmm. perversion.
But God says pray for all the saints. Why? Because we're to take what? We're to take ground. We're to advance. It's time to quit sitting and taking it on the chin and get on our knees and get serious at God, what God would have us to do. And take the gospel of peace to those who need it. Wow. <coughs> Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance. What's perseverance mean? It means keep on going. Keep your hand on the plow and hold on. Keep digging in. Keep going. Don't get discouraged. Don't finish. Don't stop. Don't stop on six. What would have happened to the walls of Jericho that had stopped on six? <laughs> They'd still be standing. Yeah. <laughs> but they came down. Why? Because they were on the offense. They had a strategy to defeat the enemy. And they kept going until it was done. Amen. They had a plan. And the plan was given to them by who? God in the Spirit told them to go not once, not twice, not five times, but how many times? Seven. Uh, God told them. The Holy Spirit told them. Go around the wall seven times, then blow your trumpets. Yep. Yep. Don't stop on six. Don't park here. Get busy for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. With all perverse and supplication for all the saints. Pray for them. Why? Because they're going to battle. Put on the full armor of God and advance. Yes, amen. Advance. The devil just might be shocked. Mm -hmm. What do they think they're doing? <laughs> wow. Now in love and in unity, move on and take new ground you're not going to a battle you're already in it mm -hmm. so fight the one you're in and then take on ground wow Ephesians 4 verse 16 I love this after he talks about us walking in the vocation where once you've been called to the first part of that chapter then later on in that chapter he tells you that he's given the church five manifold gifts talking about pastors and evangelists and preachers and so forth for the edifying of the saints to win until we all come in unity okay from whom Christ everybody say Christ, Christ. Christ. from whom the whole body joined and knit together by whatever joint, joint supplies listen to the words again Jesus is ahead so it starts Christ, from whom the whole body is joined and knit together by whatever joint supplies, according to the effectual working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in what? Love. Love. What's that verse mean? It means that every part does its part within the body of Christ. If you're a member of this body, then every part does its part. It means you're dependable, reliable, faithful. How many fight when somebody watching your back that's not faithful? How many is somebody watching your back that doesn't know how to use their sword? <laughs> You want the most proficient soldier possible to be in that foxhole with you, right? Yeah. You want somebody who can do their share and then so. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. That's who I want guarding my back. Right? The thing God, I got the Holy Spirit and so do you. Amen. But he tells us to do what? He's given us the armor. Now he sends us out in the battle. He says, but pray for one another earnestly, fervently, in all supplication or humility. Praying for all the saints. But the devil would rather have you finding fault and pick up one another apart. Mm -hmm. Some of you need to get a big roll of duct tape. <laughs> about three inches wide. <laughs> and use it appropriately. <laughs> Sometimes we have to retrain ourselves. 
Oh, there used to be a lady, wonderful lady, but she used to tell me this when I first came to this church. That's just the way I am. You just have to love me the way I am. That's just who I am. <laughs> That's a cop out. It's cute. And coming from her, it was almost lovable in a sense. But it's wrong. It's wrong. I'm not interested in the way you are. I'm interested in the way what Jesus is. Mm -hmm. I'm becoming more like what? Christ. Day by day, hour by hour, step by step, precept upon precept, according to Ephesians or Corinthians, Second Corinthians three eighteen. I'm being changed into the very mere image of Christ by the what? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's where. Working in me, changing me into the likeness of Christ. What used to be you, used to be you. That's a sinful person. But when Jesus comes, you're changed. Amen? Amen. You're born again, we use the phrase. Amen. Wow. Born again. <sighs> Ephesians 4.16. Oh, we did that one. Okay. How many of you are saved? Everybody raise your hand. You're born again. You know you're right with Jesus. You're saved. Okay. All right. The rest of you will have an altar call. <laughs> <laughs> you're not only saved and redeemed. You used to be in the world. You used to be in darkness. without hope. You used to be condemned. But now you're a child of the king. You, know ye not that you are a child of God. Beloved, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Wow. Children of God. Amen. Amen. Right. Heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ according to Romans chapter 8. Mm -hmm. How wonderful is that? So we used to be in sin, but now we're of the redeemed. Everybody say, I am. I am. The redeemed. The redeemed. I've been saved. I've been, I've been, saved. Saved. I've been redeemed. I've been justified, justified by the blood of the Lamb. The of the Lamb. And, I and I am that peace. peace. And I possess, and I possess the, peace the peace of God. Peace of God. Wow. And I'm willing to share it. How can I be at peace in the midst of all this chaos? Because I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able. Right. To keep that which I have committed yes. unto him against that day. Wow. Jesus. Second Corinthians 5.18. This is who you are now. Listen to these words very carefully. He's given you your shoes. He's told you to pray for one another. He is sitting you into battle. Here is who you are. Second Corinthians 5.18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to him. What's reconciled mean? Brought us back. Brought us back. I'm sorry? Made an agreement. Made what? Into an agreement. Brought into agreement. Yeah. Made right. Yeah. Reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation. He's given you what? The ministry of reconciliation. So if he's given you the ministry of reconciliation, that makes you a minister of the gospel. Yeah, amen. Right. The gospel of peace. Yes. Which your feet were prepared to carry. To take you. Yes. To share the gospel of peace. Yes. Wow. I've been redeemed, I've been saved, I've been justified by the blood of the Lamb. Verse 19, that is... That God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. In other words, he's already paid for your sin. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, well, brother, well, you don't know what I've done, and nah, 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 you brag about your sin. Oh, forget yourself. You ain't all that bad. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, have you ever talked to people like that that take great pride in what their sin was? Mm -hmm. What a bunch of nonsense. Why do you want to dwell on that? 
His blood is able to wash away That's right. any sin. Yeah. If you're sincere in accepting Christ, His blood can wash away any sin. That's right. Amen. Amen. What can wash away my sins? Right. Right. What Nothing can I get me whole again? Nothing but Not the blood, blood of Jesus. Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Wow. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Amen. Now, we are ambassadors for Christ. You are a Christ ambassador if you're a Christian. Yes, amen. What's an ambassador? One who represents somebody else or something, just somebody else. We have ambassadors from America. I wonder how that's going nowadays. <laughs> Pretty bad. <laughs> but you're an ambassador for who? Christ. Christ. For God. Not for Trump. Nope. <laughs> Not for Biden. Nope. You're an ambassador for what? Christ. Christ. For Christ. He'll tell you the truth. I'm not so sure about either one of those other <laughs> You're an ambassador. How important is that job? Very, very important. You're an ambassador, and as an ambassador, you're representing what? You're representing God, but what's the doctrine? The gospel. The gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Go out and preach it. The gospel of peace. Wow. And what is your message? He tells you the whole thing. He even gives you your notes, your sermon notes. He gives you your outline, your presentation. You're to go around the world saying, be reconciled to God. Please, I beg of you, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. Be ready for God. Be prepared. I love you. I care for you. Be reconciled to God. Yes. Be right with God. And this is how you do it. God forgave my sins. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yes. I've been born again. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, I come to you to ask. To ask of you that you would like the peace of God. Wow. Be reconciled. Listen to verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though, listen to this. This is amazing. This blows my mind every time I read it. As though God was pleading through us. God pleading through us. Who is pleading through you? Will you allow God to plead through you? Oh, yeah. What's plead mean? Beg. Beg? Yeah. Humble yourself. You're pleading for who? You're pleading for God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoso believeth. Should not but have everlasting life. Wow. And God is saying, I beg you, Christians, plead for me. I'm going to plead through you for them that they too might have, possess the gospel of peace. That's your job. That's your job. That's your sermon. That's your outline. That's your presentation. Put on your shoes. Put on your shoes. Put on your shoes. And move out for God. Amen. For he, verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That you might become what? 
you become what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Oh, I thought you were a sinner. I thought that's just who you were. There was no hope. You're just the way you are. <laughs> no, not according to the scripture. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become what? Righteousness. The righteousness of God. I stand right before God, not because of my own righteousness, but because of yes. his righteousness, Jesus Christ. Group, come to the platform, if you would. God has equipped you with all you need. Now pray for one another and take back the ground for Jesus. Isaiah says this about you. You that are willing to put on your shoes and go to work. This is what Isaiah said, 52-7, about those who had the proper attitude and were willing to share the gospel of peace. He said, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Amen. Wow. How beautiful are the feet. Wow. Attitude. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. You possess that power. You possess that peace. Go share it with somebody. God's giving the equipment. And he's also giving you the responsibility to share that peace. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Amen. Amen. You have been given the equipment. Pray for one another earnestly and fervently. Lace up your shoes. You know, when it's time to play a game, I usually wear my tennis shoes pretty loose. Because I don't like too tight normally because they cut off the circulation. <laughs> but when we get serious about playing somebody, I do what? Tighten them. <laughs> I lace them up. Yep. I lace them up. I make sure that my footing is going to be good. My opponent may be more than worthy. And I know I need everything I can get to defeat him. The devil is a worthy adversary. You need your shoes laced up. You need your equipment armed. You need to be ready and willing and then you need to get into the battle blessed are the feet of those who bring the gospel of peace are you willing how many are willing to bring the gospel of peace to your neighbors to your friends yes. to your loved ones father we love you we give you praise we give you glory we thank you for being such a faithful god thank you lord for our custom shoes Thank you, Lord, for all the equipment you have given us. Teach us, Lord, to pray like never before. Pray earnestly and fervently, even in the Spirit, guided, directed by the Holy Spirit, that our will matches your will completely. Teach us, Lord. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stand with me, if you would. And we're saying he is our peace who has broken down every wall. He is our peace who has broken down every wall.
reconciliation to take the peace to the world the peace that passes all understanding the peace of the gospel we ask this in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Amen. and we got cupcakes galore you're invited to join us in the back God bless you